Why do you guys think people struggle with their offers so much? What did you guys come up with? Yes. Okay, so they don't know their audience. This is our workaround for not having a massive king board here. <laughs> Big whiteboard. <laughs> don't know the audience. Okay, why else? Lack of clarity. Lack of clarity on what? On their own skills ah. and how to translate that into an offer. Yeah, okay. Don't know how to sell what they do. Uh, what they do. Why else? They think the product is what does the sales. Y'all know I feel about that, right? No! <laughs> think the product is why it sells it. Why else? They overcomplicate it. They overcomplicate. How? Yeah. Their offer is what they think that their audience wants. Yeah. Yeah. They built what they thought is cool. Right, but they're like, oh, I'm not the one buying it. And they don't remember that part, yeah. <laughs> they built what they thought was cool. They like it. Yeah. They think somebody else is already doing it, so they shouldn't bother. That's a big one. They think someone else is already doing it, so they don't even bother. How many books on marketing is on your bookshelves right now? <laughs> right, case in point. It doesn't matter, right? Oh, that's, that's uh, uh, oversaturated. We're going to talk about that a lot. Saturated. I got all D's in English. Yeah. They make an improvement-based offer, right? 100%. Yeah. They sell something they don't quite know how to do yet? Yeah. Um, I'm going to put no case studies. Yes. No hook? Like, it's, it's actually sell the thing itself? No hook. Yeah. They don't know the problem that their thing they're selling is creating. That's a big piece, 100%. I call that the core problem. Yeah. Yes, sir. I think that most people also don't know how to create value. Mm. Totally, right? Yeah, they don't know how to take the product and then add like value to it, right? No added value. Because a, a product is not an offer, right? We've got to take a product and we're going to turn it into an offer. And that's what I'm going to walk you guys through, especially this afternoon. Yes, Linda. Lack of belief. Lack of belief. That Just confidence in general and, and to go and, and, and do that and deliver a solution, 100%. Yes, hey. Sure, giving away everything that they've got because they're afraid that they're not going to have anything to give. Yeah. Fear of giving everything away. It's kind of like, um, you know, a lot of times people will think, when I'm like, oh, go create value in the marketplace. I've, uh, one of the things people have asked frequently is, well, how far down should I discount? Right? Like, how far should I discount before I'm losing money? Like, I don't want to, should I start losing money? I'm like, no. <laughs> value can be made the other way. You don't have to just discount. Right? But we're going to walk through that because that's a very common thing. Um, what else? Yes. Hey, what's up? Positioning. positioning. No positioning. We're going to get to go really uh, far and fast. You guys are giving some pretty epic answers here. <laughs> yeah. Features instead of benefits. They're feature based. Absolutely, yeah. So, I just created my avatar and my offer was amazing because I was meeting them too far down the timeline of their, of their problem-solving journey. Of their, the customer so journey? Was, I guess, they were problem-aware but not aware yet. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> not meeting them where they are. I don't know how to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to write that. But I'm with you, though. I, I, I tell you what you're saying. <laughs> Right, right. No, yeah, the custom, the offer doesn't match their customer journey. Yeah, not making them where they are. Yeah. They're not a deep customer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, on the entrepreneur. Uh, yeah. This is just kind of like squirrel brain. Fo yeah, all over the place. Just focus in general. Yeah. Yeah. Lacking a big idea. Oh no, no idea itself. Scalability, yeah. 
Scalability. I think that's about right. <laughs> yes. Not having a goal in general. Like, why are you doing this? Ooh, glad you brought that up. That is the next section. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, and these are all right, obviously. And uh, what we're going to do is, um, you know, when I first started doing this, I'd be like, what should I sell? What should I sell? What should I sell? And I, it kind of became a whip, right? And I would look around at these other entrepreneurs and be like, well, how come they did it that fast? How come they did How did they come up with that idea? That's their idea, you know? And I would like, because I thought that the good idea was the thing that did the selling, right? I, I can't, how come I can't become, I'd watch Shark Tank and be like, how come I can't come up with some idea like this? And I thought that that was the thing that caused the sale and caused the success and caused, frankly, the product. And it's not true at all. There are several steps beforehand and you'll find by the end of this process that the market is actually what creates the offer for you if you learn to act like a detective. If you think it has to be this creative genius premonition that comes from you, that, then it's, it's very, um, it's the whip, right? How many guys have done that in the past yourself, right? How come I can't come up with an idea? The first easily 16 tries for me was like that. And I went and I made what I liked and I went and I made, and it was like psh, psh, this thing that I kept kind of just um, beating myself over the head with. And uh, so this process though is not gonna be determined by on your creativity. Um, anyone get Time Magazine or read those? <laughs> no hands went up. I have never had that happen. Okay. Yeah, me either. <laughs> All right. So I was walking through the airport and I saw a Time Magazine cover. There's like the science of creativity and I bought it. All right. That's the only issue I've had. All right. But, uh, and I went and I, and I started reading it and what's crazy is they did a just tons of brain scans on people who are extremely creative, people who have massive imaginations, people who are insanely intelligent. What they found is that literally creativity has nothing to do with intelligence. They're different parts of the noggin. So it's like, you, hopefully that like feels good. I read that and I was like, yeah, baby, woo! Right, because I was like, I'm not that smart. Right? You know what I mean? But I can go flex the creativity muscles and I wanna teach you at the end of this, especially this afternoon, I'm gonna teach you how to manufacture creativity through a process, okay? And that's what I'm, uh, anyways, I'm super stoked about that. 